Good morning, Mr. Peters. Good morning, Ms. Jones. I was uh, kidding this out for you. I mean, the list of people. Scheduled for to me today. So I see. That was all. Except perhaps to take a little pee to see if there are any famous people coming in the street today. What? I wouldn't do such a thing. Were there any? No. It's just as well when you have any famous ones coming in this group today. The fame counts for very little in an office like this, Miss Jones. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, only six coming in today. Um, seven. Huh? You're right, seven. Well, thank you. Godness, we have my loaf for a change. How many of them do you think will make it, Miss Jones? I wish all of it could. It's almost more than I can stand. Watch as some of those who don't. It's not easy, I'll admit. But you have to learn to look at them more objectively, Miss Jones. Yes, sir. How many do you think will make it? I can't tell. These names don't give any clues. Wormsley. Bessemer, <laughs> like this one, ripped it down. There's a deal. You know, I have a feeling we're in some trouble today. I have nothing to go on, but somehow. Is this the right place? Who's in charge? Her? I'd like to get this over with. I'm JW Corp. Are you in charge? Yes, I'm the registration officer, Mr. Peters. Have a seat, Mr. Corp. <laughs> Just don't take the briefcase. Be careful with that. Some important contracts in there. So we're in a good place. <laughs> <laughs> Chances are, you won't have much need for that now anyway. Yeah, I suppose not. Boy, this trip here sure crossed me up. What lousy timing. Who arranges these things anyway? Don't you know? Well, yeah, I guess so. But I tell you, I sure wasn't prepared for this. If you are. So what do we do now? And what's the routine? Well, first I have this form for you, Bob. Now look, Peters, can't we skip some of this rigmarole? I've got connections, you know. Have you? Yeah. So if you just let some of those boys know who I am, and they'll shoot me right on through. And a word from me in the right place won't hurt you either, Peters. You'll still have to fill this out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, dear. I knew this was going to happen to me. I just knew it. I felt it. Now? In my bones. What do I do now? If you'll just have a seat over there. I'm Mrs. Wormsley. That's fine, Mrs. Wormsley. Now, if you'll just you have... Just come with me, Mrs. Wormsley. You can sit over there on that nice chair by the door. Oh, not by the door, please. You people ought to know what drives do to me. The door is closed. Closed? Oh, but I need fresh air. Lady, will you go over there and sit out and keep quiet? You're taking up valuable time. Well, now, just who do you think you are? Please, it's not having bickering. We have much more important things to take care of. You just come with me, Mrs. Marksley, and everything will be just fine. Not a more woman, you know. Well, you get all kinds in here, huh, Peters? All kinds, Mr. Foreman. <laughs> now, let just take these forms over those chairs over there. Now, look, Peters. Do it for me, Mr. Foreman. Oh, I get it. Make it look good in front of the rest. Okay, Peters, for you. Oh, now, Mrs. Bessemer, you ain't got no cause to blame yourself for what happened to either one of us. These things happen no way to tell why. Fast is, I don't think we're supposed to know why such things do happen. One time, I read somewhere that Can we have a little quiet in here? I'm trying to concentrate. Do you mind? Well, we're here. This is Mrs. 
You look best. That's your man there. Use out of it. 
True, Mr. Foreman, but when you enter this office, you are entirely on your own resources. Okay.
quickly. Remember that, you get three rounding points for neatness. Man, they should want to know everything about you. Makes a guy like me feel kind of creepy going back over his life. I don't doubt it, but kind of like you probably feel. You're not kidding, Pop. <laughs> How do you spell acidosis? Give me a full medical report, Grandma! <laughs> Great Scott, woman! What are you writing, a novel? You shouldn't waste that stuff here. You gotta send it to True Confessions. They gobble it up. They said we were supposed to tell the truth, didn't they? All right. Sorry, Grandma. He 
<laughs> okay, how did you, D-I-E, happy face? <laughs> it was miserable. Naturally. <laughs> My doctor kept insisting that there was nothing wrong, but I knew better.
Hey, beautiful. <laughs> Miss ya. <laughs> Have we finished with our questionnaires? Yeah. Fine. Miss Jones, be quiet, please. Oh, Peter, be sure mine gets to the right place, huh? Indeed it will, Mr. Foreman. <laughs> You tore up the first one. How did you know that? You were kind of used to the desk tear up the first one. <laughs> well, I see. And I'm kind of used to the desk up the second one, too, my friend. There's more of the desk there. It's usually the third one to fill out. Thank you, Miss Jones. While these are being processed to determine your final destinations. You may wait in the inner office if you care to. It's a little more comfortable in there. Do you care to go inside? I don't see any reason to. Miss Alfred, you ought to change your way! I thought I'd do that reason for her. Let's go to How about you, Miss Bessemer? Quite as well. It can't be any worse than there than it is out here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we'd do without you, Miss Wormley, to cheer us up. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
It's a purely mechanical phenomenon that's occurring at the moment of death. Anything you think you see is just a figment of your imagination. All will dissolve into nothingness. Anyone got a light? With this kind of talk where you're going, you won't have no trouble getting a light. <laughs>
entrance examiners give the applicant every benefit of the doubt. The requirements for entrance are rather stiff. Your group is exceptionally small, so naturally the number of you who have been accepted is also relatively small. However, percentage-wise, your group is a bit above average. <laughs> out of seven, one of you made it. One out of one. seven. One? What? Only one? Right. 
this is your chief counselor. She's in charge of your group. Counselor? Those. These things I do not call. What is through that door? But they will receive further individual instructions. The one name I have here is Mrs. Patty Watkins. Patty? What? Just a minute here! There you go, Mrs. B. And God bless you. No, Patty. She said you. Peters! What? Me? Oh, no. Can't be. Peters! What went wrong? Nothing went wrong, Mr. Foreman. Didn't you talk to the right people? Really, ma'am, this has got to be a mistake. Mrs. Patty, be quiet. Peters, didn't you talk to the right parties about me? Mr. Foreman, may I explain? Yeah, this better be rechecked. Mr. Foreman, as a boy, you wanted a pair of shoes. Do you scheme until you got those shoes? You've been getting your shoes all the rest of your life. So what's wrong with that? Not a thing. I worked very hard for everything I got. You can see it's very crazy. So? As a child, you provided yourself with cookies for the crime of the world flatter. Well, doesn't God help those who help themselves? And you're well rewarded for the prosperous life, were you not? Well, yeah, I guess so, but... Unfortunately, that was your primary concern. Material gains? Material possessions? The strength you're looking for to climb up that ladder puts not cookies, but some faith. Well, that cookie thing was just a kid idea. But when you become a man, you're going to put aside those childish ideas. Really, ma'am? The one you wanted is this is best. Couldn't you reconsider me? I'm not a well person. You're not? I've been a good woman. I've never harmed anyone. I'm afraid you did, Mrs. Wormsley. You established a dubious record of spreading enough gloom and pessimism in any one week to last the average person a lifetime. <laughs> the worth of such an attitude can do to a person's spirit is incalculable. That world of yours down there is It's a lot of cheerfulness to keep it going. Isn't there any appeal, like to a higher court? None. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Foreman. <coughs> Dad, Dad, we've all had it. Really, ma'am, this has got to be all a mistake. Mrs. B, she is a heap more qualified than I am by a long shot. You should see all what she gave to the church and the checks she sent out at that institution for people who are little, you know. You know all that. She was very generous of them. But it was a false thing, Patty. What? That kind of thing. No problem. I could easily. But I never really gained a Nicholas book as something much more valuable. One self. What are you saying? But I was a spirit brother. I didn't want to be bothered by other people. That institution you mentioned? You didn't know it. But my sister was there. It was much more pleasant for me to send a check and take care of myself, as I should have done. What? Your sister? I thought no way I'm being a human being. You can't understand this, dear Hattie, because you're everything I was not. You gave every shred of yourself to everyone. I did that. Well, cut it out, Patty. Take your mouth and sit down. You stay out of it. All right. <laughs> there are no more questions. Wait! I think this whole setup is crooked. Why weren't we told this the way it actually was? Why weren't we told so we didn't know what to expect? You were told, Mr. Foreman. Well, yes, in a way. But all the things you hear and read about the hereafter. It's hard for a man to know what to believe. What do you believe is entirely up to you. Yeah, well in my company, I let my employees know exactly where they stood. The rules were posted right on the bulletin board, and I saw to it that they stayed in line. Our rules are posted too, Mr. Foreman. The Bible is quite explicit in our entrance requirements. Faith in Jesus Christ, confession of sins, rebirth of the soul, the only difference is we don't make you do anything. Strictly up to you, your free choice. Everlasting life is a decision you have to 
made for yourself. No one can do it for you. Only you. Only you. End of speech. Now we have an end to this whole report of the matter. Immediately, Miss Alfred. I feel all friends step over to that door next year. I tend to divide you from now on. How do you come with us? Go on. I'm not going. Wait. I'm not going unless all of them can come with me. How do you that's impossible? Why is it? They don't know what they've done wrong. And they're repentant. And I got faith that from now on, they'll do real good. Honey, it's too late. They had their chance. They made their own choice. Maybe they got down on their knees. Patty, it's too late. Come with us, Patty.
many of you know, uh, we went on, uh, on a play tour even last Monday, and we performed uh, four times in different towns, and God really, really blessed us uh, abundantly, above, above everything, really. And uh, since I'm not a talker, my kids will share. Well, let's start with, uh, with Jim. Thank you. I just, I was blessed because I, I saw that God can use not only us older folks, but those under 18 also. I thank God for you guys that was ministered for the Lord. For those of you who, some of these kids belong to and those who have teenagers and young kids, um, they're real precious and special to the Lord. And they became that way to me also. Well, uh, I guess really what impresses me the most is, like, is the fact that there can be so many people out there that call themselves Christians um, when really we owe more, I think, to Christ in just a few minutes of our time every day. I think that really anybody who is willing to live up to that name should really fulfill it. I think that our Savior deserves our time, our money, our entire lives, all of our talents. And uh, I'm hoping to fulfill that. Hi. Uh, this week, our tour, I learned that I learned many things. I learned that Christ loves us. And I learned that we can be patient with others and that they can be patient with us. And, and I don't know, I learned that whenever you have problems, you can always look up to the Lord and look to your family and friends, and they can help you. Well, I learned to trust the Lord, and I learned a lot about the power of prayer, and I met a lot of people I didn't know before. I learned a lot about the power of prayer, my faith in the Lord, and I learned a lot about the people I was with. I just learned how much God just blessed us with all these neat Christian friends. I'm Jim Golding and situations and, and, and trials and things like that, but he just wants us to trust him and look up to him always and not be saying uh, yes to the world, but yes to him always and, and I just, he just drew me so much closer to him this trip. Excuse me, my voice is kind of going tonight. <laughs> Through all that yelling. My name is Glenn Kellerhall, for you, those of you who don't know me. And um, <laughs> the Lord has taught me a lot this last week on, on play tour. Um, he's taught me to love, to be patient, and that there are people for me, there for me. But one of the most things he's taught me is to be patient. In this acting business, you have to be very patient. Especially if you're the foreman where you have to have your hair frosted, makeup put on, and mustache put on. So that's basically what I learned. Well, my name is Matt Larson. And, uh, you know, this, this week, I think, above everything else, I learned, uh, as my sister and Maria said, power of prayer, you know. I was sick on a Wednesday night, 
you know, and then I, I woke up on Thursday, I was throwing up and stuff, I was really bad, we had a performance Thursday night, and, um, you know, we, you know, I just, we just prayed constantly, all day, all day, and that night, it was a Calvary Chapel grass guy, and I was able to go on, and, you know, I, I might add, I did a pretty good job, so... <laughs>
in that state of complete adoration for him. It's a two-part job. And that's what I want all of you guys to know. It's a two-part job. You have to seek it. You have to put the Lord's verse in your life. You've got to start off small. You, know? you can't grab the whole enchilada at one time. You've got to start off with the Word of God. Small and quiet and being thankful to what He shows you. As soon as you start to obey, you throw that bucket of water on the Spirit. And you start to you become like anybody else on the street. Maybe you're going through this door. But if you don't have that Spirit, you don't have any joy in your life. You're living a life like you're going through this door. And that's really sad. It's so true in a lot of lives. It's taken me a long time to learn. But um, let's just bow our heads in prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord God, I just thank you for, uh, for a good performance tonight, for bringing all these people out, Lord, to, to support the, this program, Lord. And Lord Jesus, I would pray, Father, that, uh, that you, Father, would. Uh, would just be evident to all in this room, Lord, that, uh, that if there be anyone here, Father, who wouldn't know you, Lord, that they might come up down here, Father. And they might ask, they might inquire, Lord, because the evidence is all around. They know it, it's true in their heart right now. Lord. I pray that you would cause them just to come on down here as we break it all here. Father, I would also just pray that, uh, that you would sustain these young people, Father, that you would cause them to take that step in your word, to read your word, and to be faithful to what you show them, Lord. Call you make on their life. Father, we pray that all these parents out there, Lord, that they too would encourage their parents, encourage their kids like that, Father. That they would encourage them by being that example, Father, being an obedient example to you. And I just pray all this in your precious name, Jesus. We thank you for a good week. Amen. We're looking to sing some songs now. We love you though. Come on down and join us and uh You know what? I taught these guys a song. I don't know if they remember because we only did it one time. But I'd like for you guys to sing this song. Yeah, and you guys can sing it. I love you with the love of my Lord. I love you with the love of my Lord.